Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a bit of an unboxing video. I received a nice surprise through the post the other day from SV Boney. This is the newer model of the 50mm guard camera. So this is the SV Boney SV198. So, open the box. This is what we got. So, pretty simple. No, it looks like a duck tail mount. Let's have a look. Yep. What else have we got? Uh, what have we got right here? Oh, looks like some type of an extension tube. As you can hear, hitting my ring. That's solid. And here is the actual guide scope itself. So, it's a lot more solid than the original, which I have next to me, so we can see a bit of a comparison. Let me just shut this up. There's your usual cap on the end with one screw this time, just there. This looks like a locking screw. Oh, so that's a lot easier. So there's your little focuser. It's got some nice tension to it. It's very smooth. And I presume that's the locking screw for that. Yes, it is. You have the thread on the edge, like the original. So you can screw your camera straight to it if you're using it that way. Otherwise, you slide them straight in. We have another. Ooh. What have we got here? Oh, this might be a locking screw to increase focus even more. So, this is the new version, and there is the original. If you know this, you know it's not the easiest to make focus. You unlock this screw and basically you slide it in. It's a little bit sticky. This is, I've had this a while, hence I'm missing one of the nuts from the or bolts. And my helical focuser does not work at all. It's completely dead. So I used to use this. I've been using this for around a year. Um, but it, I was having some issues so I replaced this, give me one second. Sorry, I had to go run away and grab this. So I replaced my original 50 with their 30 mil. Obviously the diameter is a lot smaller, but it was more to do with zooming in. A problem I encountered, which I thought in my head I encountered anyway, was with the focal length being so zoomed in on this, with the light pollution I have in this area, I was struggling to actually find stars. Um, and also some certain patches of sky, depending on where I was pointing, they were, it wasn't picking up really any stars at all. Um, because they were more far, further out. So I decided to go for a 30. I've been using this 30 now for about a month and I've managed to use it a few times, not many. The weather in the UK has been awful, but already it's been a lot, lot better using this 30. But I do know with the new one, it has better coatings on the glass. So I wonder if that is going to help with the light pollution problem. So, I'm going to do a bit of a test. It's gonna be about as scientific as you can expect. So, I'm not going to be using my 200p telescope for this test. 
I will be using my 70 ED just because I have two clamps. So I can basically stick that one there. It should fit. Yep, that'll fit right there. That looks like a monstrosity, but it should do the job. And I'll be able to just change my guide scope from one to the other and basically do my test that way. This, with this on, <laughs> it weighs quite a bit. You know what, for fun of it, let's stick that one in there. There we go. That looks a bit daft. What does that look like? It looks like a spaceship, like it belongs on Star Trek. <laughs> but, yes. So, I'm going to do the test and record all that and we'll see if we can spot any difference but guiding is going to be the main one as i said i was having problems with the original i was having problems with the original guide scope so i went to the 30 massive difference a lot more stars for me to pick from so it was phd2 it was running a lot better basically so we will see what this one can do. One thing I do like already, which I will mention straight away, is the mount bracket. It's just, it brings it further off. So when I use this on my 200p, it's borderline this far away from the scope. But that, that should be a lot better. So. We'll skip to the next section. Just had a quick test in the daytime. So, this one's fine. Don't have any problems with this. This one, on the other hand, is very impressive. Obviously, the focal length's more, but the gain doesn't need to be as high on this one for some reason. It seems to be exactly the same, these two. Um, you do have to use the extension tube, which is supplied. Um, this one, on the other hand, between trying to get focus, it is an absolute nightmare. The gain seems too high and it, it, everything was just blown out ridiculously. And trying to adjust fine focus just by moving this is, is it just hard my recommendations definitely just for observing <laughs> a neighbor's roof about 30 houses down the road um, these two definitely this is good that's fine the only issue with this one is you focus you have to undo this locking ring and you very slightly move this and then once you finish you lock it back up don't recommend focusing through the back end where you put your guide scope but you can do, but you do want it in as far as you can physically get it. This on your hand, the focus is so smooth and it's so precise. I do like this. So next test, nighttime in guiding with stars. So we shall see. So as you can see, I've decided not to go with Andromeda. Um, it's now got too early or too late either way. I've run out of time. Um, the weather is just impossible <laughs> to try and plan anything. So I've gone straight for the guide scope onto the 200p. Um, I'll do a comparison with the original um, when it gets a bit darker. Um, we'll see what the guiding's like, see if it's actually better. If the camera's doing something weird, I decided to purchase myself a gimbal. <laughs> So it follows me, which is really strange. Freakishly strange. So, yes. Um, some of you might have seen on my Patreon that I got a bit carried away with some spray paint. Um, so my tripod, I have spray painted the legs because the black one's not available in the UK. Um, I've also done, if I bend down, can you see me? painted the, um, the pier leg so any type of reflections will stop 
I also realized I was getting glow from underneath the, um, the tube. So I 3D printed a cap, which basically sits in, which is here. I remember dropping it. So a little cap here. Oh, it doesn't look like that. So a little cap, basically. Um, I made it a little bit small. I've got a new design, which I've not put onto print, but basically this will clip in like so. That's it. That's gonna stop a lot of the light. I've also put a lot of tape around here. Um, I'll have gonna use some black tape, but I've completely run out. So I've got something called sniper tape, and I use some generic duct tape around that, and that's blocking a lot of the light out. I have a security camera on the greenhouse, which checks the scope and monitors this kind of monitors the sky. But because it's got night vision with the red lights, they seem to be beaming straight through. And the LED strips I had around here, I've had to take off between cats destroying them. And I think that might have been some light leak from that at the same time. And that's a barbecue. Ignore that. So tonight. We're gonna to try to guide in, see how good this new SV Bernie scope, well, newish SV Bernie scope is, and hopefully it should be a lot easier, especially for focusing, because oh my god, that old one is awful. But yes, we shall see. So currently I have the original guide scope connected. As you can see, I have my floodlight on so I can actually see what I'm doing which is causing a problem for one of the scopes. So I'm going to dis try and disconnect this and hold the laptop at the same time. So I'm going to hold this against the tube ring. And hopefully try and find a star. This is a lot more difficult than you would imagine. There we go, kind of got it. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it's gonna kick in, right, so we have a star right there. So it's focused, tiny little star. So, if I now put this back, this is what impressed me. Why is it when you want to put something in like this, you can never find the hole. So that is the picture I'm currently getting. You can make a star out right there. Otherwise, obviously the pollution, light pollution from my floodlight. This, as I said, made me very shocked. So I'm going to disconnect that and put the new one straight on. I'm going to kick in. Oh, if I disconnected it. There we go. Look at that. Stars. Now that, <laughs> that's impressive. Somehow my floodlight don't bother it. I don't understand how. So I'm gonna see how PhD does. Um, I've currently got a target in place, telescopes uncovered. So I'm gonna start on, of course, telescope is parked. So let's go for my telescope. Unpark it, um, back to framing, and let it go. So, I'm gonna let this run. I've got a night planned, a few targets I'm after, I think it's free, but we shall see. And I will show you what the guiding looks like. Well, he's not gonna show you what the guiding looks like. The thing is, the guiding I have with this setup is very good. My total error is zero point two, well, 0.20 ishes. 
I think the most I saw was 47, but most of the time it's around 20, around. So let me just go quickly back to PhD two, and I've got stars. And I've got the floodlight running. Oh, it's just moved. And they're good. Um, sold. For the moment, I'm definitely using this, and I highly recommend it. If you are interested, I'll put the links in the description to the SP Boney webpage where you can buy it. Also, if they have it on Amazon, I'll put down an affiliate link so you can get it from there. But, lovely.